Tournament, Finals Part 2. The first match was a complete victory for Benamaru. Gazo need to discipline himself and fix his temper. Anyway it was decided for him to be secluded alone inside the dungeon. Weighted bangles and anklet will be put on him, it'll make him have disadvantage when fighting against the challengers. Even with that handicap, he was still too strong. Looking at the spectators' appearances, even though they didn't comprehend the situation, it looks like they vaguely understand Benimaru's strength. It seems the excitement will continue, let's have another great battle. Oh well, because the irresponsible announcement and commentary from Suka, it was impossible to comprehend the current match. Suka, although I said that you were allowed to give an explanation, however, your specialty is deception to some extent, there is no need to give explanation for this match. Oh well, though there was no plan to expose their true ability. Suddenly I feel that someone was looking at my direction, it was a girl with a slightly long ears that's staring, at me. I remember, she participates in yesterday's second match and was blown off the grounds instantly. Was she a half-elf one? I thought so because her ears were a bit small. There was no need for her to keep her eyes on me. Oh well, it must be my imagination. Near the seat of that girl, there were people who I recognized. They were the Tengus. What? That girl who was the granddaughter of the Elder, her face was deep red. Although the guards near her seems to call her, but she didn't move a bit. Was she sick? Oh well, if there were something they will say it. So I ponder, and then I leave my seat. Yakisoba, if I don't go quickly it will be sold out. Though there was no need to eat, I must purchase it before it run out. After all, it was a delicious food so it can't be helped. 2. After the lunch break ends, it was time for the start of the next match. The second match. Sai vs Tagura. There was no need to watch it, it was Sai's victory. Although, it seems Sai also intended to hold on for exactly 30 minutes. Without forgetting to service the spectator, he didn't neglect to liven it up. A reliable man was different after all. However, there was a problem. And that was. Well then, it finally starting. It is the match of our Sai Sama. Contestant Dagura who have no other redeeming features than having a little muscle power. Well then, how will he fight? Against Sai Sama, I think he's a worthless small fry, but at most I wish for your cooperation to liven up the match. What a favoritism announcement. It was already at the level to feel sorry for Dagura. I interrupted the match at once, and declared the change of the announcer. As expected, she overdid it. I will stop using Suka for size match. And because of that, Shuna enter and replace Suka as the announcer. Different from Suka, the adorableness and the tidiness of Shuna seizes the spectator's heart in a blink of an eye. That is as if she was using a skill, but it's just her natural charm. Begin. This time for sure the match was starting. Dagura was. Uh oh oh ooh. Please look at this, Shindano. The awesomeness of my growth. So he shouts, while cladding his whole body in key 3, and tackle 4, himself towards Sai with intense power. That was, just like a huge energy ball, it had a power to blow away the opponent who comes in contact with it. However. It's just an after image. Yes. It's not a clone, but it was a real after image. A small remnant of magic power particles was left behind by the spatial transfer. Since it have mass and presence, the leftover after image body can even be called as a clone. When you use clone technique to the utmost limit, at that moment it will begin to produce false body. It's a super high difficult technique, even if you acquire the skill, you might not be able to use it. To master it, you have to keep practicing it, only then you can use the ability well. He appeared behind Dagura and from his blind spot, an energy ball hit Dagura's nape. The energy ball was as big as a fist, but it didn't have penetration power as strong as Benamaru. However, the effect should be tremendous because it was a blow aiming at the vital point. By the way, when Benamaru defeated Gazrael with one blow, he uses the energy that he had tempered for 30 minutes. 
the E5 was denser than it usually emitted, it's refined with the addition of penetration attribute. Because it has the disposition to break through magic barrier, to defend against that pure aura was impossible. Against superior enemy than us that mastered the use of multiple barriers, this was one of the effective special technique. Size energy ball this time, did not have penetration power that strong, it's just a normal condensed energy ball. And yet, Daguro was kneeling on one knee after being hit by that attack precisely on the nape of the neck. You're good. Although I judge you only as a bug who just following Shindano, you are quite strong. Just because you're a bit popular. Don't get carried away, you know. Even your certain kill hit, it won't be able to inflict even a wound on this great me. Eh? Dagura, what do you say? If you say like that, what about the telephone punch that you made while kneeling? A wound. Wasn't that obvious that the aim was not that? My surprise was unrelated, Daguro was raising his key. The leaked out key filled the inside of the barrier, the air near Daguro's surroundings clearly made a strange fluctuation and started to drift away. The density was so high that the normal spectator can see it. Certainly. Only this fellow's energy was a demon lord class. However, he still didn't understand how to use it at all. That was, the reason why he was sent and came to this country to study. Also, it will soon hit the 30 minutes mark. It will end with the next attack. Take this. My best attack. Forest Blaster Wrath of Mother Nature 6. It was a haphazard attack technique. With all of his strength, he didn't think about defense at all. If described in one word, he is an idiot. He concentrates all of the ki that cladding his body on one point, and then he discharged it towards Sai. It was spreads yet it concentrated only at one point. There is no way to escape, a full offensive technique. But, that's only if the opponent can't use transfer. Fuhaha. Though you transfers and run away, I will pursue you anywhere. To pursue an opponent that's teleporting, are you really able to do that? because it was inside the barrier, he will soon discover him. Anyway, I spot a problem on that technique. The greatest problem was, it didn't leave any Iki for defense. If the attack he received just then was a killing blow then he will be defeated, it was the basic to value defense more than offense. And then, 30 minutes passed. Sai so just uninterestingly transfer from place to place, just when the time became 30 minutes. Death Sentence Hazy Life Freeping Slash Week Version 7 A one-step kill. Two katana inside one blade, a sword that can attack even the soul. Physical and spiritual. A sword with different purposes. This time, a blow with katana that kill the soul. If he uses a skill, he would inflict a fatal damage. If Sai was not going easy on his opponent, he will already be dead by now. It just striking with the back of the sword exclamation mark so Shuna explains, the spectator was clapping and cheering, but it was a frightening technique. Originally, it can cut till the soul, but Sai stop it exactly before it cut the soul. This guy, not only he fights by using thread, his sword skill is also excellent. Really, I don't know which one was the better between Sai and Benamaru. Hearing this wisdom King Raphael tries to tell me, but I pass. I want to hold on the anticipation. With this, the second match ended. The third match. Gabita vs Hiro Masayuki. Well then, the highlight of this match was, whether the Hiro Masayuki was the real thing or not. Though the Hiro Masayuki's leg seems to tremble a bit, was this guy trembling with excitement? Really? Was he really the same as Hinata? I paid my attention to the grounds. Minus 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 Masayuki's Pav. Nice to meet you my name is Hanju Masayuki. What are I'm doing right now? That is what I want to know. In front of me, stands a slightly cool late, warrior. It is a hobgoblin according to what the announcer on sand said. Hobgoblin? She must be lying. 
how can she said such a cool warrior evolves from a goblin? Or rather, such thing is not important. The problem is, for what reason I am in a coliseum like place, and become the opponent of that hobgoblin? That is what I want to ask. This, no matter how you look at it is a duel right now. No way. Seriously, I will fight? One year has not passed since Masayuki came to this world. The place he arrived was called Ingrasia Kingdom, he don't understood the reason why he somehow on that place. Then he was helped by a boy who introduces himself as the leader of Freedom Association. Though Masayuki thinks that the boy was on the same generation like him, but the boy said that it has been more than 10 years since he came here. That boy was Kagura's Akiyuki, he was taking care of Masayuki who didn't understand anything. However, from that time Masayuki's head start to become hazy, at that time he feel his behavior became like someone else. Just remember it right now, Masayuki realized that he possess unique skill of chosen one nine comma he think at the time he consulted about it to Yuki. It was a story of the time when three months have not yet passed since he came here. Unique skill the chosen one, the effect of the skill was tremendous. There will be an excellent explanation for him for every action the opponent takes, whatever he does will result as a heroic act and will be praised, it was such an unfair ability. Moreover, because Masayuki himself attracted super good luck, the result of his normal attack will become critical hit 10. Well, although the level of Masayuki's kendo skill was just at a hobby level so it's not a big deal, but he was peerless against bandits or low class monsters. Masayuki entered the Freedom Association by the recommendation of Yuki, and began as adventurer. At that time, he thinks that his abnormally high offensive ability was unnatural when compared with the others, this is when Masayuki first noticed his ability. However, the real frightening thing about this ability was another. The effect was also applied to the companions of Masayuki. And also, even if it was a deed done by his companion, everything will become Masayuki's achievements. In other words, all attack of his companions will also become critical hit, as they received his blessing. And, every admiration for his companions will become Masayuki's. If he remember, because Masayuki possessed the desire to become a hero 11, it bring forth this ability. When Masayuki consulted about this ability to Yuki, it seemed a smile spout on Yuki's face. After that, his head starts turns hazy, day after day he started to feel like he was becoming someone else. Masayuki and his companions, growth at an overwhelming speed, after around half a year has passed, he was called as the Hero 12. He also participated in Ingrasia's tournament but he easily became the champion. Anyway, just by drawing his sword out, the opponent declared he give up and defeated. The spectator, who saw it, seems to misunderstand it as an instantaneous attack, but actually there was nothing happening at all. It was one of the effect of unique skilled chosen one, they just got hit by the hero's hockey 13. To oppose this ability, if it was not an unique skill holder with equal power, then the opponent couldn't resist it. However, it's never been said that it was an omnipotent ability. And yet, Masayuki who until yesterday didn't have any doubt. We are invincible. We can win against any kind of opponent. Even if it was baseless he still believed in it. Why? I believe in such foolish delusion. Or rather, I want to run away. I really want to run away. While in confusion, Masayuki tries to comprehend the situation desperately. If things like this, it was better if his head remains in haze. So. To begin with, why has the haze cleared up? That was the question Masayuki have. He remembered. Last night. He went and saying things like prepare yourself, the one who will defeat you is this me exclamation mark to the silver haired boy, who was the demon lord. Then comma oh really? Do your best exclamation mark while saying that, s, he taps his shoulder. And then, when he sleeps at night, his head feels refreshed, he awake properly. Eh? Why am I in this place? It was his judgment on his current situation. No, the memory was intact, but he doesn't understand why things had become like this. 
Honestly, as just by remembering what he had said, he was surprised by the excessive emotion. The trust in the looks of the companions he brought with him, he felt shaken by the excessive emotions from it. So Tilda, the third match finally starting. What kind of bewitching fight will it be between the greatest young warrior of Tempest and the hero Masayuki? Well now, the two is staring at each other at the center. Crap. There's really no time. Masayuki's mind become flustered. Normally he would have inexhaustible curiosity about how the announcer one sand tail connected to her bottom, however he don't have it now. He turns his gaze to the opponent. Then, was it a coincidence? Their gaze perfectly met each other. If he watched carefully, the opponent was also nervous, the opponent seems can't settle down. It resembles the appearance of the opponent in Ingrasia's tournament. So Masayuki thought. Though the haze was cleared up, it doesn't mend his ability disappeared. Then, wasn't the effect of turning his every action into something that's considered as a heroic act also still remained? If that's true. Even if he run away from here, the spectator might interpret it as such, right? Alright, then let's go. Masayuki decided it. After all, if the match begins, he will end up got beaten up. Even if his ability can influence his current opponent, he was uncertain if it can be used on the next opponent. Because, even though he only took a glance at that large black wolf and the dragonet warrior, it doesn't seem to be an opponent he could win against. Even with weapon made from my throw 14, he doesn't think it's possible to penetrate that steel fur in the scales. Here, let's run away. That is not a mistake. What excuse would he make? He suddenly thought about such thing, but he chooses to leave without saying anything. He was shy, he thought various good excuses. That's right. There are the spectators. So he thinks. Wait. This match, I withdraw. He frantically tries to mask his trembling voice, and only say things to that extent. And then without any additional remarks, he immediately turns his back and left. Having to concentrate this much to move his legs, it was the first experience in his life. Thus, Masayuki carried out a magnificent escape from the biggest pinch in his whole lifetime. Masayuki's pop end. Minus 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 minus. Staring at each other in the center of the stage were Gabuta and Masayuki. And yet, Masayuki suddenly declared a withdrawal, and then he left the place immediately. As expected, was he only a bluffing brat? Or there were some other intentions? Gabuta was taking God's pose but... Oh ah uh, uto. An unexpected happening. It was an unexpected withdrawal from the contestant hero Masayuki. However, given the current situation, we will able to see contestant Gabuta's true ability in the next match. Is his opponent contestant Gvul? Or is it contestant Trangu? Please look forward for it. So was the announcement from Suka who returned on this match, she seems to have recalled the next opponent. Immediately Gabita's face turned pale. If it's like this, it had been better if I was defeated right now Su. So was the audible voice that comes from Gabita's heart. Though the spectators begun to become noisy. That's it. Is it because he in front of the demon lord he can't be serious? Now that you mention it. Because the demon lord didn't participate in this tournament, he withdraw. Well, isn't it because he won't be able to fight the demon lord that he doesn't have a reason to stick around? In any case the strongest one will be made clear as black and white. So he didn't have a hobby to beat up the subordinates, except for the demon lord himself? As expected from hero Masayuki. And so forth, they start to consent with the astonishing explanation. Then. Masa Ayuki, Matilda Say Ayuki. It has become a large chorus. To this cheering, Masayuki answered by raising one hand. Although his action was a bit clumsy. What is this? Is this a religion? I somewhat felt startled by it. Why does just by declining to a match, he received such high evaluation? 
I can't understand what the people were thinking. But, why he stopped the match suddenly? Solution. Last night, because the contact with Master, the brainwashing by Yuki was lifted off. That is the result from his judgment. Ah. So that was it. Or rather, I can lift it with my key. His last night condition must be because the effect of the brainwashing equals thought manipulation 15. However, if the brainwashing was cleared suddenly, then, he must be feeling nervous. It then leads to him withdrawing, did he decide that action after he thinks about it desperately? If that's the case, it was wonderful one. I need to commend him later. He was a good example of Japanese person. I want to hear his stories too. I will ask Hikaru later to make sushi, however I will need to ask him to come. Anyway, though it was unexpected, the third match also ended. The fourth match. Kabul vs Ranga. Well then, it was the final match for today. This match, frankly I already know the outcome. So pitiful, no matter how hard he works, there was no chance for Gabul to win. As I thought, Gabul began to attack Ranga with his spear as soon as the starting signal was given, but it was repelled by Ranga's fur so the attack didn't reach. The compatibility was the worst as well. Vortex of water was produced. It tried to seize Ranga, but the Vortex's momentum was killed by Ranga's Tempest ability. He attacks from the sky too, but because Ranga has acquired the ability to run in the sky, it can't become an advantage for Gable. Obviously, the breath attacks also useless against Ranga. This was a very unlucky lot. He met an opponent he can't win against. Was it the side effect off tuner? There was a time where he was lucky but there also times where he was unlucky. Although it's easy for him to be lucky at critical moment but I think on other occasions his bad luck will come out. Last time, like when he was fighting against the Holy Knights, it might be the result because he was lucky. Thanks to that, this time the situation becomes like this. Well now, the attack from Gabal ends, and everything were end up useless. The rest was the delightful playtime for Ranga. It was harsh too. Since Kabuta win the last match by default, the match remaining time was added onto this match. For one whole hour, Rango will be playing to his heart's content. Oh well, it becomes a training for Gable, it also becomes a good appeal for the spectators. Gable, do you best. I'm cheering for Gable inside my mind. And I join my hands for prayer. Tournament, Finals Part 3 Following the qualifiers, the first day of the finals ended safely. Gable did his best. With indomitable spirit, he stood up over and over again, seeming like a wall that couldn't be passed. His figure left a deep impression, captivating the spectators. Oh well, Suka secretly ignored Gable's attempts to give up no matter how many times he tried. Oh Udo, what did you say? What? I can still do it. Don't underestimate me. Contestant Gible, what motivation? Such an unyielding man. He still hasn't given up Dolda. Suka. No matter how you look at it he already gave up, but his luck ran out when Suka became the announcer. After all, for a full hour, Ranga toyed with him one. Since the spectators didn't know the circumstances, it seems that Gible was remembered as an unyielding man. I can't decide whether that's a good or bad thing. However, I want to say that I'm glad it's not me. When the match ended, everyone returned to their respective inn. I got up from my seat and started to walk away to invite Masayuki for a meal. Please wait a bit. I have something I want to ask. Unknown. There was a person who called me to halt. It was the half-elf girl from before. With pale light blue silver hair and her jade eyes, she was a super bishujo too. Ah, so you are here. Ah. Surprised, Rimurudano, it's been a long time. Illilude. Before I could reply to the girl, a person came and greeted me while panting. Did he come running? It was Duke Illilude. Ah. Duke, it's been a long time. Are you well? And, is she your acquaintance? Rimuru. She was a person the Duke was hurriedly looking for. 
although I expected it, more or less let's listen to his word. Ah! Allow me to introduce you. This is Her Majesty, the Empress of the Sorcery Dynasty of Sarian, Elmshia el Sarian. Her Majesty, this is the person I told you about before, Demon Lord Rimurudano. Ilalud. Pretty much, she was the ruler of the country who supported me. After he introduced the Empress to me, he introduces me to her. Amu. I know. This one three, is the Empress of the Sorcery Dynasty of Sarian, Elumshia el Sarian. I hope we will get along well. Elumshia. Although she abishujo, she emits a Salamara. I think she might have suppressed it before, but the person before me is without a doubt someone worthy of being called an Empress. Hello, I'm Rimaru, the King of Tempest. Please take care of me as well. Since I'm ignorant with the etiquette of king, please pardon my rudeness. For Rimaru. I introduce myself as well. Oh dear, I sounded like an upstart outlaw. 5. I wish you would excuse me from such stiff formalities. How should I put it, since the Empress came dressed as an adventurer, I want to think something like that should be fine. Amu, um, it's not a problem. Such things aren't important. What is with this country's outrageous war potential? That's the real issue. Elumshia. She pressed me for answers while forcefully barraging me questions. Beside her, Dukil Elud was greatly perplexed. We changed locations, and we were now talking while eating dinner. I wanted to eat with Masayuki, but I gave priority to the Empress of Sarian this time. Though it was regrettable, it couldn't be helped. According to the Empress, Although she was a master in magic, she was defeated by a strong devil and couldn't do a single thing about it. That devil was Dagura. Furthermore, he instantly defeated countless opponents by himself. He was a surprisingly outrageous opponent. Despite this, that devil was easily six, defeated by by a single Tempest executive. She couldn't accept this and became indignant. By the way, the Empress in here is a homunculus seven that she transferred her consciousness into. So, there is no need to worry about her getting hurt, although she was frustrated about her loss. Well you see, because Her Majesty was never lost before. When it comes to magic she's the best. Therefore Her Majesty, what I can say. Since it was a demon lord, it won't turn out as a half-assed tournament. Ilalud. Duke Ilalud soothes her as if he's given up on it. She acted recklessly because there was no danger to the real body, thanks to that I think Her Majesty's selfishness was great. That night, I enjoyed conversing with Sarian's Empress, and successfully struck an agreement about future technology. Although it was just a verbal promise, it was a promise between fellow rulers. I don't think it will be broken. After successfully making a promise with the Sorcery Dynasty of Sarian, I can say that the tournament was already successful. I'm pleased with the progress, and I'm convinced that the relationship between our countries will become even better in the future. And then, the night grew old, as the morning of the second day of finals arrived. Minus 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 the second day of the finals. The fifth match. Arno vs. Beretta. A noteworthy match. Although Arno said that he would conceal his status as a holy knight and registered as mask knight. Eh? He doesn't depend on others, right? The one who is called the strongest of holy knights that vows to protect people how could he do something like run away, eight? If he is a man, it must be a fight fair and square. Isn't that right? Arno san? Demon announcer. Suka seems to have asked again while smiling sweetly. She ended her words with fool. Ha ha ha, of course. A holy knight wouldn't run away from any fight. Trap knight. Maybe because he was desperate, he was muttering it will be alright if I win if I win. It seems he decided to continue without concealing his true identity. He's just like a young rabbit that has been ensnared in a trap. No, I think that conversation about escaping wasn't needed right? Well, whatever. 
a wicked smile seems to have appeared on Suka's face. Or rather, when she was still a Bill's imperial guard, she looked like an obedient and good child, but she changed suddenly after she revealed the fact that she was a woman. Was this her original personality? Or did she receive a wicked influence from someone, probably Sai? Or, it might be both. She has grown into a frightening little demon. It's too late now. I must be careful so I don't end up ensnared in a trap as well. Begin. Suka. While I was thinking about the pitiful Arno, the match began before I realized. Arno was taking a distance from Beretta, vigilantly holding his sword. As expected, it seems he won't attack carelessly. It started right. The day to show off Beretta's strength has come right. Annoying fairy. I was surprised. Suddenly Ramirez came and spoke near my ear. Veldora and Milim also came along from behind. Why you guys? Weren't you all engrossed inside the dungeon? Rimuru. Fuha ha ha, Rimuru. It was completed a while ago. You're looking forward to it. Milim. Since I also have an interest in the tournament. Yesterday, I performed probability manipulation of Investigation King Faust 9. In yesterday matches, weren't the matches concentrated with ones that had clear results? Otaku Dragon. What did you say? Question mark. That explains why for some reason people with similarly problematic powers were fighting each other. And, did he manipulate it so that the combination he didn't have interest in would be concentrated in yesterday's match? Certainly, there are a lot of highlights 10, in today's match. The combination like Ernod vs Beretta right now and the Unmask vs Diablo, were matches that Raymarie and Millam did not want to miss. For something that he considered uninteresting, he still accurately manipulated it. Let's overlook it for the sake of such interesting events like this one, he will never say such generous words, huh? As expected of him. Oh well, I don't have an interest in the outcome, but it will serve as a good reference. Ku ah ha 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 ha. Veldora. Veldora began proudly laughing. Unlike the old him, he seems to have become interested in the matters of strengths and weaknesses. It must be the influence of manga. Now, he seems to be researching a beautiful way to win. What a hard working fellow. Oh well, since he is such a strong person, I didn't think that he would let his imagination run wild for such useless things. While I was surprised by the entry of Raymarie and Co., the match showed a new development. Arnold's sword attacks were easily repelled by Beretta's arm. Although it continued for some time. Oh it oh, contestant Arno's attacks cannot pass at all? Is he going easy on his opponent? But if these are serious attacks then is he unworthy to be called the strongest holy knight? Suka. That brief comment was a sharp wound. But those words couldn't disturb Arnold's mind yet. Ha! Ah, every attack so far was for the sake of a plan. Look below its feet everyone. Arno. Trying to look good, Arno pointed below Beretta's feet. There, a magic formation was drawn without anyone having become aware. At the intervals between the sword attacks, without being noticed he had been drawing the formation by scattering silver dust. He was a skillful man. However, to be able to fight with this method, it seems he wasn't a simple muscle brain. Active 8. Holyfield weak version. Arno. So Arno shouted after he throws the Shrike in 11, with barrier tag 12, attached to them in four directions. Crystals were embedded in the handle of the Shrike. Apparently, they were charged with magic power so it seems to enable the invocation of the barrier in a short time span. Although he said it was weak version, to able set up Holyfield by himself. It seems that Arno is a man who cannot be underestimated. However, the equipment was made by Kurobi for Arno to test 13, so frankly it can be said that Kurobi was his contributor. It seems that after doing various experiments with Arno, the two got along well with each other. Thanks to that, the quality of weapons from Tempest seems to have increased as well. It's really a great thing. Normally, although it is just a weak version of the Holy Field, 
most people would succumb to it when confined inside. It might be that only some of the executives would be able to cancel such a barrier. Is there even a method to completely capture Ben Amaru and Sai? Because the ability compatibility was only to this extent, I was unable to judge its strength and weakness. And, in the current situation, the compatibility was very bad. And for Arno. It's useless. Because of the ability given to me by Rimuru Sama, I don't suffer the effects of Holy Field. Beretta. Beretta moves to counterattack against Arno for the first time while informing him indifferently. It can be understood that Arno's sword attacks were not effective because Beretta has physical attack nullification. Also its body was created using magic steel. Beretta's fist was clad in helical mix of Yi and Aura 14, emitted from the unique skill sent Demon Fusion 15 cometh then it fired that bizarre energy. The disposition was similar to Energy Combat Arts 16 Aura Blade, but the power had increased tremendously. It's also possible to shoot it at high speed. Though it seems not to have been concentrated to the level of penetration like Ben and Marus, the constant key that clad its whole body was still beautiful without any blemish. The level was different from the irregular Tki that Dagura emits. The power was not just simply Ki and Dora, one blow from that fist could be considered a finishing move 17. Beretta who shifted over to offensive let out an attack with fearsome precision. The spectators seemed to see the match as a great one, but my eyes couldn't be deceived. Beretta hadn't shown its true power. It only fought with 30% of its power. Fufu. How's dat? How's about dat? My Beretta, seriously cool. Raymaris. Raymaris flew around my surroundings, boasting with a self-satisfied look. Not enough to only show it to me. She was also boasting to Veldora and Milim. Veldora only replied comma Humphrey, even so I am stronger exclamation mark but. Fufun 18, it's okay for you to be excited now. Tomorrow my lion mask will dismantle your Beretta, I'm sure of it. Milim. Not wanting to lose, Milim answered back to Ray Maurice. Geez, is this a children's squabble? Furthermore. Don't you think we should have worried about the pitiful or no san? The brutal announcer herded him into a situation where he couldn't surrender, so his situation was hopeless. Or rather, won't our nose spirit 19, be broken by this? Just with this, my own assessment of him considerably increased. When the fight between Ray Maurice and Millam ended, the match had also ended. Of course, it was a victory for Beretta. Arno used a special move he calls Meteor Slash 20, or something like that, but the sword broke and crumbled when came in contact with Beretta's body. Oh well, it was natural that the sword lost its durability after striking the hunk of steel that is Beretta's body continuously. The weapon will accumulate damage little by little even if the weapon is clad with Tki. Even though his sword was broken the match continued. But Arno conceded defeat, and so the match ended. His sword being broken was just an excuse. In reality, he wasn't able to land a single hit on Beretta. However, since the spectators didn't know about it, the skillful announcer followed up Arno. Unfortunately because his sword has broken, he must reluctantly surrender from the match. With such an explanation, the spectators understood. Suka, I will treat you to a meal. So I thought with teary eyes, somehow she gave a skillful commentary. However I pretended not to know about it. Arno's honor was protected. That is good. Thus, the fifth match ended with Beretta's victory. Tournament, Finals Part 4 It's the main act. Milam was extremely excited, she was encouraging, threatening, the lion mask. I heard her say do you understand what will happen if you lose? But whatever could she mean? Perhaps it's better not to know. And with the signal audible to all, the match began. They stood in the middle, observing each other. The two devils before us were displaying an overpowering presence. And the fact that they did not release even a hint of their aura made the situation all the more bizarre. Dot. Carrion never doubted his position as a being of strength. Until he was defeated by Milim, that is. But as a result of his loss, 
he learned that a league beyond his own existed. Thus, today he was observing his opponent with the composed gaze of a true warrior, not the prideful gaze of the strong. This guise is insanely dangerous. When? The? Hell? What's a devil on par with a demon lord doing here? Normally, Carrion wouldn't care about his opponent's strength rushing in with a smile on his face, ready to accept defeat. However, even though he has delegated his royal responsibilities to Milim, he lived as Milim's shield. Lose a battle, win the war. Is not an excuse he could rely on. So, training with these thoughts in mind caused him to increase his powers beyond what he had as a demon lord. After all, he has been used as daily stress relief for Milim during what she called sparring sessions. Of course he'd get stronger from that. Let your guard down and you'll end up in a different world. Survival required him to strengthen his own body. Thus, he became much more cautious, and stronger. And yet, even the experienced eyes of Carrion could not see the depths of his opponent's strength. Hey, Lion Mask. You do understand, right? Your job is to trash the doll, Beretta, in an upcoming match. I will not allow failure here. As my underling, get fired up. Yet for some reason, he felt no encouragement from her words. Large drops of sweat fell from Carrion's forehead. What will happen if he loses? There's no need to guess, a hell of a training will await him. So far, he's endured easy mode and normal mode training, but has yet to unlock hard mode. And according to the rumors, there's also the ultimate course hell mode which cannot be reached by an average person. If he loses, he will certainly be thrown into it. So even against such a dangerous opponent, there's no choice but to get fired up. Kufufafu. You don't look too well. However, I cannot hold back. Since I have joined the battle for the sake of my rank, I must be a little serious this time. TCH. TCH. Looks like the opponent isn't holding back, Carrion thought. I, too, cannot lose. My bad, but I'll be going all out from the start. He replied. And immediately afterwards. Begin. Editor note, this must be the signal that Trinmaru noted previously. So no, this chapter does describe the start of the match twice. Suka's command reached their ears. And as if tearing the air around them. A battle cry reverberated through the arena. It was Carrion who roared. Covered in white silver bristles, he revealed his magic beast form. He was not aiming for victory while preserving his strength, rather, he sought to win quickly by using all of his strength. Dending the arena floor itself, he released his fighting spirit along with the Byako Saira Yushki. A large crack ran through one of the stone slabs on the floor. The depth of the crack testifying to his step's power. I got him. He thought, and confidently slashed the Byako Saira Yushki at the Ablo's neck. He had just covered ten meters in an instant to land a fatal blow, while wielding the Byako Saira Yushki a legendary item that could cut through any and all barriers. Half-baked defensive bearers will not be able to withstand its mighty blade. Carrion's confidence came from the fact that no bean could evade the coming blow. It was a sure kill strike that would bring him decisive victory before his enemy could gauge his strength. So thought Carrion. Beast Strike The spear's tip split into two, preventing Diablo's escape. The fangs of the Bayako and the jaws of the Siryu. These two slashes embodied the true strength of the Bayako Siryushki. One destroys all the barriers of an escapean foe while the other decapitates them in a single strike. A perfect maneuver. And perfect timing. Thus proclaiming his confidence, a fearless smile appeared on Carrion's face. And at that moment, Diablo's figure vanished. Teleportation? Carrion was startled for a moment, but then regained his calm and used magic perception to observe his surrounding. High-ranked devils are those who mastered transfer magic. Pulling it off instantly and without a chant was unexpected but nothing that can't be dealt with. In the space-time category of abilities, transfer consumed the most magical energy. Creating a gate and stabilizing space is the safest, and consumes the least magical energy to move. However, 
what Diablo did just now transferring without the use of a gate, even when moving by himself was ten times as costly. And to teleport without the use of a chant. Only a handful of high-ranked devils could do that. This isn't an ability usable by just anyone. In the teleportation ability just now, it's an advanced ability above spatial transfer. Spatial transfer may look instantaneous to the average person, but in the eyes of a master there's a slight time lag. However teleportation happens literally in an instant, time lag doesn't occur. It is the pinnacle of the transfer type abilities. This isn't an ability that could be used in rapid succession. As a counter measurement against it, one should go on the defensive, and wait for the opponent to exhaust himself. The opponent would weaken faster than yourself. So there is no need to hurry. In fact, since the Ablo did not escape using spatial transfer, that means they could not have avoided it otherwise. TCH. Lucky guy. If I didn't use my sure kill strike right from the start, he would have wasted magical energy pointlessly. Carrion thought, carefully maintaining his attack stance. He repeatedly attacked in order to bait his opponent to consume his strength. And, every time he would get away in an instant. He patiently waited for a chance. Diablo continuously transferred around, making a fool out of Carrion. But, what an awesome amount of magical energy. How long can he keep transferring? Though he had teleported only once at the start, he had not transferred himself a countless number of times. To continuously transfer without chanting, this is impossible even for an archdemon. He knew the demon before him was an abnormal existence, however it surpassed his wildest expectations. But Carrion did not get impatient. That's because among monsters, there's his own shockingly unreasonable master, Miriam, whom he always keeps company. So he stuck to basics and observed, paying attention to his opponent's reactions. Constantly looking for a chance. Carrion's actions were reasonable, and, in fact, correct. If his opponent wasn't Diablo, that is. Kufufafu. Analysis, complete. I have obtained data about your physical prowess. I'll proceed to verify. Since it's a little dangerous, please be careful. Diablo who had been transferring around until now, suddenly said. And cold sweat ran down Carrion's back. His instincts screamed danger. A myriad fireballs floated around Diablo, radiating monstrous heat, hiding powers Carrion could not perceive. Carrion was resistant to fire and frost, but there's a limit to resistance. Carrion released his battle spirit in all directions, creating a barrier to prevent the fireballs from hitting. The impact was so strong that Carrion almost lost consciousness as the barrier was crushed, however, he had successfully defended against all the fireballs. And although an intense heat followed, the barrier weakened it to levels that Carrion's resistance could endure. It's my turn, eat this. Beast Roar. While arranging his barrier, Carrion converted his magical energy into raw destructive force. An attack aiming for the moment when the opponent was exhausted right after deploying an attack, this was Carrion's strongest sure kill magic particle cannon. This time for sure, the finishing blow. As if responding to Carrion's thaws, the drag magic particles emitted by the golden light burned the surrounding air. At this point, he wasn't holding back at all. All of his power was behind this attack. Kufu, Kufufufufu. Wonderful. This shows the brightness of your soul. However, you have used this attack a little too late. What a shame. Diablo's voice reached Carrion's ears. And, as if the world had stopped, as if time itself refused to continue, the light stopped right in front of its target. That is, right in front of Diablo. Impossible. Carrion, thought, and quickly moved to create some distance. And then, he felt as if his mind and body were separated. Even if he tried to turn around, he felt his body fixed in place. He could see himself firing his sure kill beast roar. WH what is happening? Carrion asked, impatiently. And, happily in response, Diablo said. Kufufafu. This is my ability, Paradise Time. In this world, the time has stopped and only the two of us are conscious. Originally, I had planned to make you into my pawn, 
but your will was too strong. I might not be able to tempt you. Be proud of the fact. However, your spirit is weak against intrusion. Evidence that your mentality is poorly trained. So rejoice. You can still grow stronger. My lord, Rimuru Sama and his ally Milam are like sworn siblings, so consider this a service. Learn from this mistake and devote yourself wholeheartedly to improvement. Carrion could not understand the explanation, but he realized his defeat. Directing his consciousness into this world, he again looked at Diablo. And once again realized the overwhelming difference between them. The fact that he could materialize as this world itself was something he could never understand. Before such overwhelming information, there's nothing Carrion could have done. In this world, he could not even move magic power. Damn it! I'll win next time! He yelled sorely with his last bit of strength. And Diablo's voice responded. World's end. As he had said, the world itself began to collapse, with Carrion's consciousness getting caught up and disintegrated. Had Diablo not rescued him in the end, he would have perished in the real world as well. And also, the beast's roar destructive power too was caught up in that world's collapse. So it will probably vanish in the real world. Such is Diablo's ability. The ability to control the life and death of the opponent based on their mental strength. The ability of his unique skill seducer, is absolute when activated within the world of illusions. And, inversion of truth and fallacy, the ability to interchange reality and illusions. The embodiment of illusions became reality in the material world. Only by training your spirit can you overcome this ability. The world regained movement, Carrion's beast roar was nullified in the illusion world, and no damage was dealt to Diablo. All mental damage was converted into physical damage, leaving Carrion wounded all over. I, have lost. Kufufufufu. Wise decision. If this continued, I would have no choice but to kill you. Carrion's defeat marked the end of the sixth round. Kufufufu. In the future, don't forget to train your spirit. Mind your own business. I would do it even without you telling me to. Carrion glanced at the VIP room among the audience venue. The figure of his master glaring at him while grinding her teeth came into his line of vision. Triple underscore a dot dot as expected, she's completely enraged. Carrion wanted to cry, but because he was wearing the lion's mask it wasn't noticed. Let alone his mind and spirit, what awaited him would bring him to death's doorstep many times, no doubt about it. Thinking about that. Carrion felt gloomy, and wanted to redo his matches. Dot. Lion Mask Carrion was defeated. No, I felt had he tried very hard. His last attack was particularly good. If it wasn't for Wisdom King Raphael's explanations, I wouldn't have understood what happened either. Suka was able to convince the audience that the Ablo used some trick, she's particularly apt at swindling people, it seems. However, that was a good fight. To the audience, it seems like Lion Mask was overwhelming for the most part. Those of us who understood, saw Diablo using an extraordinary ability that lacked any common sense. Few, if any, truly understood what he had done. Other than us, of course. Dot. This is bullshit. That demon, actually defeated Carrion and won. It seems there wasn't much difference in ability but that unique skill isn't normal. Miriam stated her thoughts with vexation. She was now being thoroughly ridiculed by Raymaurice, and was even drop kicked with a serves you right. In other words, my Beretta is superior. That one line enraged Miriam and as punishment, Raymaurice was pitifully trussed up like a bagworm on the floor. That string seemed like materialized energy. Raymaurice probably wouldn't be able to break free. Well, you reap what you sow. It is true that Beretta did better, but Raymaurice went overboard. The person she's making fun of is too evil. And so, seeking to avoid collateral damage, Veldora and I did not participate. Currently, the most pitiful one is probably Lion San, Carrion, who just did his best. Well, you'll now be trained, and I hope I see you alive in the future.